Well, first of all, let me say that uh, it's going to be an extremely difficult task to follow Lee McGrath on anything. Uh, when I first started attending these board meetings, I guess uh, two and a half years ago, uh, I guess some people may have wondered, well, okay, who is he? Well, I know that he is. Who is he? Where did he come from? What not? I think it's become increasingly apparent that my camera serves as the eyes and the ears for a lot of folk. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to continue that going forward. But with regard to the specific issues that we're dealing with here today, uh, I, I think that the 10th grade education, while it, I think it is a problem that faces the entire licensing spectrum. The very first meeting I came to, there was a Vietnamese young lady here with a reciprocal license from Texas that this board was having difficulty honoring because of the 10th grade education. There was, there was arguing going forth, I had the video of it, about whether about the translator ought to be approved for the, the uh, because in Vietnam you only go for 10 years. Uh, so the equivalent of that 10th grade, 10th grade education was posing a severe problem. And she was being grilled about whether or not she meant, nobody apparently was challenging her ability to be a cosmetologist. She had a license from Texas. Um, so I do think the 10th grade education is a problem. I think that that was brought out by the Vietnamese uh, cosmetologist. So I think it extends not just in this situation, uh, which I th certainly think that it would here, but it's a broad question that I would question the relevancy of. And I think that goes to a broader uh, focus of simply inhibiting economic opportunities, which I will always be opposed to. Uh, I believe in the free enterprise system very much so. Uh, I don't think I could phrase it, and I'm not going to repeat what he said, because he was quite more critical of this board than I could ever dream of. But you had a licensee that appeared before you and had made an internet post that I repeated. Uh, and I'm, it was not very flattering. I, mean, I know you're familiar with him because he graduated from your institute. So uh, that being Chris Gidry. Uh, uh, so with regard to the North Carolina Board of Dentistry case, what they said was that unless you're held accountable to some other body, you're subjected to these suits. And, I don't know if anybody was aware of it, but there was a bill put forth in the last legislative session to transfer the adjudicatory function of all occupational licensing boards and commissions over to the State Board of Administrative Law. I don't know why that bill died. All I know is Dan Martini came into the Senate Comp Committee rooms with the first hearing it was supposed to have, and he said it ain't happening. That's as much of an explanation as he could give. Uh, but I think that was an effort to shield state boards and commissions from the inherent liability that I see arising uh, in, in not just this board, but a number of other boards and commissions, particularly the dentistry board, uh, as a result of there, there is no real oversight of these boards and commissions. The only avenue you have uh, is to then appeal to 19th Judicial District Court if you uh, disagree with a rendering of this board, uh, and I can tell you, having seen several of those, including Nell Doral's case, uh, I don't think they, the judge will readily tell you, I don't want to be involved in this. He, he said that. He said, I hope y'all work this out because I don't want to have to make a ruling on this. Um, so, and I think that is indicative of their disinclination to want to hear matters like this. And it's a matter of record. Anybody can pull the transcript where Don Johnson said, y'all need to work this out. I don't want to have to make a ruling on this. Uh, so I think that it, it would very, be very easy to assert that there is no oversight for these boards and commissions, thereby, and that was the whole purpose of transferring the adjudicatory function over to that separate body. Since that didn't happen, I think the exposure is, as he just indicated, still wide open. Uh, and uh, I think there are a number of initiatives that this board could change to help alleviate that. Number one, as we just talked about the 10th grade education requirement. Number two, as I have stated several times before, and we'll just reiterate it now, I don't think it's justifiable to have a mandatory minimum of two instructors to teach in a cosmetology class. You know, I could understand the theory behind, hey, if there were 20 or more students, because any instructor can only spread themselves so thin. That made logical sense. But to mandate you've got to have two instructors when you only have four students in the class, I think is absurd. Um, and, and I would question 
the rationale behind mandating that requirement because it can certainly be interpreted to an antitrust violation to drive smaller schools out of business. Um, I think pretty well, I didn't do a hand bad for following after you, but I guess it, uh, as I said, that was always going to be a difficult challenge. So, well, Mr. Um, Burns, were there any other specific areas of the, because you, you talked a lot about politics in Baton Rouge, you know, in the capital, but what, is there anything else specific that you suggest we ought to change in, in these? Well, I would concur with the 10th grade education for sure. I'm not going to stand before you and say that I'm knowledgeable about hair breeding. I know what I've heard from being in the committee testimonies, but I'm not an expert on what's involved in hair braiding, what level of expertise is involved. From those I have consulted, though, I'm not, I'm not talking about the Institute for Justice. We know what their position is. But I spoke with a gentleman last night. He said, he didn't, he didn't think this was real. He said, you've got to be kidding me. And I said, and he's a, he's a minister. Uh, he said, you've got to be kidding me. And I said, no, they're looking at regulating this to where it can only be done in a licensed salon. Now, he happens to be African American. If you've watched my videos, you know who he is. Um, and he's a very good friend of mine. But he, he literally didn't believe this was happening, but I'll have the video to show him <laughs> that it is. So um, I doubt anybody's got a question to me, but if you are, I'll be happy to answer it, and then I'll take a seat and film the rest. Any questions? I just want to clarify that this is, is already regulated. This is not an attempt to regulate something that's not regulated. It's actually the rules open up and remove some requirements. So this is already regulated. Is that directed to me or all of us? Are Just so everybody knows that um, alternative hair care is already regulated and the rules actually relax some of the requirements, remove some of the requirements. And so it would allow some people that are not eligible right now to get uh, permits. So I guess the, the argument then is that it didn't go far enough to say. Chairman, I wonder if I could ask Ms. Morris to point Can out. Can I get in? Wait, hold on. I'm done. I'm going to consider myself done. Yes. Ms. Morris makes a very interesting point that uh, escaped me when I was reading through the proposed rules uh, about, uh, about relaxation of re uh, regulations. And I wondered if she, if she would be so kind as to point out uh, where, they, where there is a uh, relaxation of, of regulations. That's, I think we've gone through everyone who um, who wanted to speak today. And if does anyone from the board have anything else they want to add, or because we are going to take this up at our next our next meeting and, uh, and come up with our responses. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending. And with that, um, we'll hear a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Will the next. The next meeting is going to be the regularly scheduled October the it's in November. Oh, I'm sorry, November. The November meeting, and just so you know, the December meeting is going to be at one instead of nine. I'd like them all to be at one. I'm not a morning person, but I assume November will be still be in the morning. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.